Okay, guys, it's Mamie, and it's time to do our recipe sleigh. It's going to be a recipe card holder, which I'm super excited about, and I want it in my kitchen. And because of that, some of you may be mad at me because I've been waiting on a certain paper pack to come in, and it hasn't come in yet, and so I don't want to wait any longer. And when I saw this paper pack, I thought it would be so cute because it has little food pieces. This one is called Not a Creature with Stirring from Photo Play. It's adorable. And it's cute if these colors match your home, but these colors don't match my home at all. And I hope you will forgive me. I've decided to change my color pack or my pack. I'm going to use Christmas Farmhouse because this screams my kitchen. And I just think this will be so cute. I'm not going to use a whole lot of it. I won't need a whole lot of it the way I plan to do my, um, do my sleigh. But this is the one I want to use. So please forgive me for that. Listen. If you do the other paper pack, you can do exactly what I'm going to do. Just use your paper pack in place of this paper pack, okay? So, I want to say that up front because I'm in love with that paper pack and it matches my house. Now, I'm also going to be painting today. I'm going to use this Vintage Effects, and this is in the color gold. And I haven't opened this bottle yet. Oh, look how pretty. Very pretty. A lot of you were asking me how these Vintage Effects did, and I thought I would show you on camera. I hope this doesn't mess with your eyes too much, but I'm going to sit this on this piece of um, plastic, which is actually a paper pack wrapper that I have taken the paper out of, and I'm going to use it to be my, uh, to protect my surface. So on my sleigh, I want to paint it gold. I don't really want a washed effect. I actually want it to be a pretty full gold, but I want to show you how this paint works because you were asking me, and I want you to see how it washes. Do you see that? Get my hand behind there. See how it washes and you still see the wood behind it? So I may put a few coats on it. I don't know. I just wanted to use this shimmery gold on here. I thought it would be cute. And I'm going to paint the entire sleigh. I don't know where all my decorations are going yet and how I'm going to lay them out. I just know I want the whole sleigh to be gold when I start. And then if anything shows, it'll be gold and it won't matter. This is so pretty. I actually kind of like it just kind of washed on there, actually, now that I've done it. That's kind of pretty. Can you see the shimmer? A little bit, not cool. So let me get this guy painted and we'll get right back together. So while our sleigh is drying, I wanted to tell you about this free PDF that I will put in the description below. This is the recipe card I'm gonna be using for my little recipe sleigh, okay? So I made this for you, it is free. It may print a little funny on your printer. I noticed that mine's a little crooked, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use the lines to help me cut them out. And I cannot remember the dimensions. I'm gonna cut one of these out and tell you the size of this recipe card in case you wanna make your own or in case you wanna use some, something you've already got. I just wanna let you know what size we're using. I wanna give you a tip. I'm gonna, I printed these on cardstock. I have found in my printer, if I'm not careful, like if I just put this on and tell it to print 15 of them, cardstock can kind of get off in your printer and you may come back and your pages be printed off of each other and you don't want to do that. So what I did was I printed two or three at a time and watched them print so I would know that they didn't get off in the printer and I didn't waste any cardstock that way. And by the way, this is just a very lightweight cardstock I pick up from Walmart just on my order pickup. And so it's just a, I think it's Georgia Pacific or something like that, but it works well for this kind of project. So here's the recipe card. Well, let me tell you the dimension. This guy is five and a quarter by four. Imagine that, five and a quarter by four, and he will work perfect in our little sleigh. So I have printed for myself 40 of them, so let me cut them all out. Okay, I've got one coat on it. One thing I would suggest, if you don't wanna use this stain type paint that I'm using, you might wanna use an acrylic. Do you see all that that looks like it's pulled paint? It's not, it's glue. So there's glue that's kind of seeped around the edges. And I could have sta um, sanded it first, but honestly, I didn't see it till I started painting it. It's not the end of the world for me. I'm not that picky of a crafter. I just like to craft. So I'm just gonna let it be. But if you don't want that to happen, you might wanna use just an acrylic paint because an acrylic paint would kind of cover that up better. But with this being a stain type of, or a wash type of paint, then it um, kind of left it open and I'm still touching up because that's what I do. So I'm gonna go around, make sure I don't have any bubbles, any blubs anywhere, because I do that. But I wanna show you a tip. If you, like me, you're gonna leave this to sit and decide if you're gonna put a second coat on it, which I may do. This bag I have it sitting on, and this works with any plastic. If, if you're gonna walk away from your um, paintbrush, if you'll just put it inside of some plastic, like so, and I'm just gonna stick that tape down to my work surface until I come back, my paintbrush will stay wet. 
It works really good if you put it in a sandwich bag and wrap it up or wrap it with some cling film. And that'll keep it wet so you don't have to use another brush or wash this one out in between. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry and we'll come back and work. So here it is and I think that it needs a second coat, but I'm not gonna do the second coat at this point. Um, I'm going to decorate it. If I do anything, I'll get all the decorating done and then I'll second coat the sleigh rails and I might second coat the inside. But I think I'm gonna put so much here that it won't matter. But look how pretty this um, shimmery, glittery, look how pretty the glitter is. Isn't it cool? I love that. So also remember, it looks worse on camera than in real life. Like for example, right here, it looks like I've missed it, but I haven't. It's just a reflection of the paint and it being a stain. All right, let's look at my cards. So this is 40 recipe cards. That's a lot of recipe cards for me. I probably don't even have that many recipes, but you see how they will sit in here. There is a little room to either side. This was just the size I thought would be right considering if I made them any longer, I wouldn't be able to put them, put very many in here. With this, I'm gonna be able to get a lot in here. Now my plan is to fill this over the years. You know, I wanna have this, put recipes in it every year, and who knows how long it'll take me to fill up 40, right? But in the meantime, I wanna make some little tabs to go in here and put inside. Now, there's probably all kinds of things you could do here. If you wanted to give this as a gift, what would be really cute is if you had the recipe cards to maybe the front and back here, maybe you put in like some spices or a cookie mix or something like that. You know, you fill this up as like a gift holder, but I just think this is gonna be so cute sitting on my counter with my little recipes in it. So let's make the dividers for this. And I may decide to make my dividers about a half an inch bigger so that um, it'll be a little fuller. So I may go half an inch on either, so be one inch, so half an inch on either side and maybe a quarter of an inch taller. So let's work on those. As I'm sure you are aware with me, I do not know how this is gonna go. I've just decided this is something I wanna do and I'm going to make it happen and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. So I'm gonna run through and look at what pages I'd like to use for dividers. And I want five dividers. This, this would make really cute recipe dividers. Something like that. I don't know, I don't wanna use it here. I can use that somewhere else. Oh, these stockings are cute. And you know, if it's got buffalo check on the back, yes, that's gonna be a divider. And let's see, that's three. I wanna use different pages. So there's four and one more. Look here, that's a good one, five. All right, so I won't use nearly all of that paper. I mean nearly, but I want um, five different looking dividers. So since I wanna make these bigger, like I said, than the recipe cards, I'm gonna cut this down to four and a quarter by five and three quarters. So right here, four and one quarter and then by five and three quarters. And don't worry about having these scraps. This is a perfect size to do a card with or anything, so that's not bad. And this is the size I want my dividers to be. So let me just show you real quick. I'll bring the recipes back over. So that way my dividers will be wider than my recipes and taller, and I'm gonna add a tab to it as well. So there's one, let's do some more. Now, could these be too big? They could be, I don't know, but this is where I wanted to start. I think you gotta start somewhere. So you see this wood grain line I have lined up in the cutting line? I think that'd be a great place to fold my tab. I think that would look really good. And it's five eighths of an inch wide. You can see it's just an eighth of an inch past a half. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna count five eighths of an inch out from there. So that's where it would be. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. That makes it one and a quarter. So I'm gonna put this on one and a quarter and I'm gonna slice that and that should give me what I'm looking for for my tab. See, I'll be able to fold them on that line. Won't that be cool? And then I only need five tabs. So I think what I'll do is cut this down to two inches and that'll give me six out of this piece and it'll be plenty the size I need for the little recipe slay. Recipe slay? I totally got ahead of myself here, but you won't because you'll watch the whole video first and you'll know what to do because you're on to me by this point to know exactly that you should watch the video before you get started, right? Okay, so I should have just scored this whole piece, but since I didn't, I'm gonna put this into my um, scoreboard and score it at five eighths of an inch right there. And that should score pretty much on that line, right about it. And that gets me to the center there. So I'm gonna score all of these at five eighths. So now I'm gonna make tags and I'm, or tabs, and I'm gonna use my small angle punch on my We Are angle punch. And that way the small one will give me just a slight little curve, right? So I'm gonna take this with the fold line, you see where the fold line is there, the fold line into the punch, and just get that 
Isn't that cute? That slight little angle. So again, the fold line in. Be careful because you're not working with a full sheet and you do not want to send it in too far. So I need to line that up just right. There we go. So there's my first tab. You can do this with a whole, I mean, with a, a corner rounder. You can do it with your with pretty much any of your edges. You can do it with the large side. I just want to use the small side today. So now to my dividers. What I'm going to do is pick the one I want to be in the front, and you know your girl is going to want buffalo check in front. So here's going to be my front tab. And what I'm going to do is glue this little, uh, this is my front divider. I'm going to glue this tab to the top about halfway down. I think I have plenty of height because I added that quarter of an inch. So I think I'm going to glue it about halfway down just like that, and that'll be my first um, recipe section divider. So I add some glue here, some glue across the top. And then again, about halfway down inside the tab, just eyeballing it. You know I don't do perfect. I'm not stressed about being perfect. Just gonna get that glued on there. Isn't that a cute little file folder tab? So cute. And then what we need to do, I like them to kind of continue out, right? So I'm gonna use this one to help me place the second one. So I'm gonna add my glue here, put some here and some here. And then what I'm gonna do is lift this up and it might be a little fiddly, but I'm gonna use it to help me get my next one lined up. And I'm gonna put them together. Whoops, pulled it right off. There we go. Line those up together with each other and right next to each other. Just make sure I have my paper lined up. There we go. How picky can I be, right? You don't have to be that picky. <laughs> but that looks really good. And then my last one will go to the end here. And it may overlap a little bit. It looks like it might, but I'm not gonna stress about it, y'all. I'm not gonna stress about it. Let's see if we can do that the same way I just did that one. So lined up, sit it here. It's gotta go to the end anyway. Let's get our height together. Pretty good. It's a little fiddly, but you'll get those on there. You could lay it down and do it. But there's three dividers, and now I need to do the other two. So now these are my dividers. I'm not gonna write what's going on them yet because I don't know yet. It's been a long time since I've looked at Christmas recipes, and I don't know what's gonna go there yet. It'll probably be like appetizers, um, main dishes, desserts. I don't know what five things I'll want to put in there, but I tell you what I will do. I'll go ahead and divide these up. I'm just gonna stick some behind here, and then some behind here. Y'all know I don't do real fancy, right? So this is pretty easy to, to uh, make happen at home, right? And I'll just put the rest back here, and that way when I put them into my sleigh, I'll have some recipes in between all the tabs. So let's bring the sleigh back over. It doesn't matter which way you do these, you'll pick a front side, but your little recipes will live like that. Isn't that cute? and it'll just grow. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could put your recipe sort of to the front here and give yourself some room, and you could divide this in half and use this for storage, maybe for some christmas theme measuring spoons or um, like little um, spatulas, you know the little Christmas ones that have the little scenes on them? That'd be cute in there. Or put a little dish towel back here. That would be super cute too. I just want it to hold my recipes. That's all I was going to do. Who knows? I may put my favorite spices, my pumpkin spice. I may put my own measuring spoons in here. I don't know, but I think it's cute. All right, let's decorate this guy. Now here's the fun part. If you don't want it to hold recipes, decorating it, you can do anything you want with it. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna put a piece of buffalo check all the way around. You know I did. I didn't even have to tell you. You already knew that was coming. So I want a strip of this buffalo check to go all the way around this guy. So I'm gonna have to piece it. I'm gonna have to use two pieces. So let's do some evaluating on that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down to one of the strips to get it where I can count it. Oh, that's cute, I'm gonna save that. So like if I want it to be three inches wide or three stripes wide, I can get it pretty even. Let's see what three stripes looks like on here. Three stripes may just do it. I don't want it to go all the way to the end. I want it to kind of go, I want a little bit of the gold at the top I think three stripes is just enough. Let's try it. So I'm going to cut three stripes away here. 
and let's place it and see before I cut any more. Look just exactly what I wanted. See how that's gonna go? That's what I was looking for. I want a little bit of the gold edge showing at the bottom and a little bit at the top, like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one so I can piece them together. Now I'm gonna have to do the same thing. I'm gonna cut that white away so that my lines will match all the way around. But this is cool, I can use this for something else. And then cut this piece away. Now what I'm gonna do, because I have to piece these together, is see what's the best way to do that. I think the best way to piece them together might be to cut it off at a white and cut it off where the black starts and then piece it like that. I have plenty of it, so let's just see. Now listen, you don't have to be this picky. I say it all the time, you don't have to be this picky, but I'm being picky, aren't I? <laughs> so there's the black side. Let's cut this one off to where a white stripe starts. There we go. And then this, I should be able to piece together and it look pretty seamless. It won't be seamless, but it'll be pretty seamless. So see, that should continue our pattern out pretty good. All right, so let's go back to the sleigh. I'm gonna start back here in the middle and let me show you what I'm gonna use. Do you see that line? Will this stand up? No, it will not stand up. Okay, I'll have to do it and then show y'all. Do you see that line in the middle? I'm gonna let that be my middle guideline. But before I do anything to make life easy on me, I'm gonna take my bone folder and put it on my work surface and roll this paper through it. Ooh, that's a lovely noise, but do you see that curve I got? See that? Sorry about the noise. I wanna do that to help me get my placement. Let's do it here as well. And you could always hold it in your hand if you would rather works either way. So now I'll be able to place this on that curve and get a little less resistance. And I'm gonna start by placing the end first. I do not wanna fight it, so I'm just gonna do about that much and get it placed using that little line. And I've gotta be mindful of the side. You see why? You could, you could easily get it where you don't want it. So I've gotta be mindful of where this is being placed. And that looks actually pretty good. So I'm gonna squish that down, y'all. This is adorable. I'm gonna love having this on my kitchen counter. All right, and then I'm gonna glue this guy down the rest of the way. Now you could use something else here if you wanted. You could use Mod Podge or you could use um, any other glue that you're comfortable with. I wouldn't use a hot glue here. The hot glue would buckle. It would just be a little bulky, I should say. This is not gonna get a lot of pulling or tugging. As long as you get a good coat of glue under there, you'll be fine. Y'all knew I had to have a buffalo check one, right? <laughs> now let's do the other side. Same way. Start on the edge. Give ourselves a little bit to get us going. We want to line up that page. Let's see if I can hold it. I want to line it up. Wrap that down. Too cute. All right, I'm going to glue it down. You can't see that. I'm gonna lift this up. Do you see this piece here? I need to cut it away and I'm gonna use my craft knife to do it, um, but I'll show you after I get it done. So you see there, I cut that edge away. I'm gonna do the same here and now you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just laying this on my work surface and with my more passes, less pressure mentality, I'm going to run this over just like this. More passes, less pressure and get that cut away. There, we got it. So now you can see that our sleigh is buffalo check. I'm so excited. I think I need to add a piece across the front, so let me measure that up. All right, check it out. I don't have enough strips left to do this with, but I do have these two pieces that I just cut away. I'm gonna be able to put these here and then put something here to cover that up. So I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm gonna decorate. I'll figure out something cute for there. But I'm gonna put these two pieces here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down about like that so that it'll match. Actually, if I cut the edge off, I'll show you what I mean. If I cut this white edge off, it'll probably match perfect. Let's try it. Good, good. And then this one on this side. There we go. And they'll just barely overlap and that'll be fine. So I'm gonna glue these down. 
Now, it's not a perfect match on the side, but that's okay. I plan to put something pretty there, too. So, check that out. I love this little buffalo, this little buffalo check guy. I think I may try to cover the inside with paper. I don't know. Okay, so I want to try to cover the inside, but I'm going to need a pattern, and I'll show you why. Because that has an angle. See that? So, here's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to put this piece of cardstock in here and push it into that corner and then fold it to get that angle. So this is gonna become my pattern for the sleigh so I can get that angle. I'm gonna get my bone folder and just kind of coax that into that corner. So I can see what that angle looks like. Does that make sense? So now when I take this out and I go ahead and fold this on that line, I'm picking up paint in there, it must've been a wet spot. <laughs> This way, I will be able to use this as a pattern. So let's trim this off, this angle off, like so. And now let's just see if that works. So now when I put this in, it should wrap around like so, and it does. And it's the right height too, I'll show you why. That's really as tall as I can do it there unless I wanna do some piecing, but I like some of the gold showing. So now I know this is a good pattern for me to fill the inside with. Um, and I think I may fill it like this and then add the second piece here so I don't have quite as much, I don't have to cut a piece in half here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, we'll see. All right, let me get this out. So I decided for ease of cutting that I'm just gonna mark the center and here's how I'm gonna do it. Remember me telling you I was using that line on the back to line them up? I'm gonna mark at that line just like so. And that's where I'm gonna cut that down and then I'll have a pattern for this half and a pattern for that half. Now what's gonna be important is we're gonna to have to cut a pattern for left and a pattern for right. So that means I'm gonna to have to cut it this way one time to get my angle, and then this way another time to get my angle. So let's pick the paper we're using. So I decided this has to be the inside, right? It has to be. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay this down here, and I'm going to see if I can get the same pattern this way. So let me trace it. So if I do it there, and I flip it over and do it here, these might line up pretty close, but I'm not sure. Let me cut this one out and then we'll see. I was hoping this would line up and it's super close. So you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm just gonna trim away a tiny little bit right here to make that match and do my pattern from here. I think that's the smart thing to do. So remember, you're gonna need one angle in this direction and one angle in this direction. So what I'm gonna do is since I'm cutting that piece down to match this one, I'm gonna cut this out like so. So my thought process earlier would have worked. Close, pretty close. We're a sliver off. All right, so to match them up, I've gotta cut a sliver off the top and a sliver off the bottom. I'm gonna make a mark of how big my little sliver needs to be at the top and at the bottom of this one, and then make that slice. I'm being very persnickety. I'm gonna plant that in the middle there, go up and down to give myself a nice sliver and I'll do the same on this one. I can tell you what it's not gonna be, and that is perfect, but it'll be close. It'll look good, I think. All right, let's see if our plan worked. We need to curl these pages again. I'm just gonna use my bone folder, give myself a curl here. I don't need too aggressive of a curl. I actually probably did that one too, too aggressively. So this one will go to this side, like so, the Mickey. And then this one, let's curl it. This one will go to this side. So when I glue them in, they'll have the right, the correct angles, I should say, instead of right angles, they'll have the correct angles. Looks like they're gonna overlap slightly in the back, but that won't be a big deal. All right, let's glue these in. So there you go. We're actually pretty close in the back. You see how it got a little gap at the bottom, but look how good the sides look, right? So there we go. All right, there's a little glue sticking out. I'm going to now cut a piece for here, and this one I can just measure. So this piece needs to be three by just slightly under four and a half. So I'm gonna lay this over here, and I think I'll just do a 16th under 
and see if that fits. And I'm pretty sure my checker's gonna mess, match up. I kind of looked at it to see. If it doesn't, I might have to um, trim down just a little bit. Let me flip this over this way. That's pretty close to matching right there. See that? It's not bad at all. I think I'm going with that. I don't think I'm gonna stress over that at all. I wanna show you guys something. This piece covers this spot so perfectly, and I'm gonna to try to do this in the camera so you guys can see me do it. I don't really want it to hang over the top of my sleigh, but look how perfectly that ties all that together. Isn't that pretty? I think I'm gonna do a little scene here. I don't know what's going on it, let's just see. I'm using stickers now, by the way. So I have an idea. I found a sticker I wanna use. I've got the sleigh standing here. So I need to cut a piece of this cardstock two and three eighths by one and three eighths. I'm going to make a little tag. So about right there. Then I need to cut down two and three eighths. One, two, three, there we go. I know how much y'all love using eights, but I think it's gonna work for this little look I'm going for. And now I'm gonna take my tag punch again, my angle punch, I should say, right here. And I'm gonna punch it with the large side here and here. Perfect. And I want to show you something. So this little tag is a sticker from the sticker sheet. And look how cute this is overlapped, like layered like that. And then won't this be cute if I bring it and put it right here, like beside the flowers and maybe even put a bow right there. I think that'd be cute. So I think that's going to live right there. Let me see if I want to do anything else. So I think I'm going to add this little wreath here to the side, just to add a little something. I think that's cute. And now I'm gonna glue these straight down. So I'm just gonna treat each side like a scene, if that makes sense. I think that'll be cute. So let me show you what I've got. I've cut myself a fairly long piece of twine, and I'm gonna lay it at my third finger right there. See that? And then I'm gonna wrap this around so I get two loops wrapped around my fingers, all right? That's the size my bow is gonna be. And where they overlap, where my streamers overlap, I wanna bring that to the middle. So you can see there, I've got it in the middle. Now I've got for myself two pieces of twine, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and start a little circle with them, like a little knot. So just get that started. You have to be good at this, right? You can always use your tweezers to help. Then I'm gonna stick this through there, and then I'm gonna pull this tight. just like that. You see how that comes into the middle? Pull it super tight. Okay, these will become my little bow tails, all right? And this is now my bow. So I'm pulling and tugging on this because this is a very thick, easy to uh, maneuver twine. And now I'm just gonna cut them down to different lengths. And before I go to my project, I'm gonna take my bone folder and kind of curl them like you do ribbon. So just bringing it right here and right here. And it won't do a real curl, but it'll give it a little bit of a, a twist. Just sort of soften it. All right, and then this is gonna go here. Now you may decide to hot glue this, which makes perfect sense because this is gonna take a minute to dry. But I have found that the thinner my glue, the faster it will dry. And what you can do is place this where you want it. Isn't that cute right there? Just kind of dangling. And take yourself a piece of tape and just hold it in place until it dries or just let it sit there and walk away and do something else. I'm just gonna stick a little piece of tape on the bow, like so, and wrap it around so I can keep working and that will dry. So I have to decide which side it's gonna show. I feel like this side is more likely to be the side that shows on my countertop. And now I think I'm gonna build my favorite scene on this side. I don't know what my favorite scene's gonna be. I think it's gonna include this tractor sticker. Let me show you. I feel like this tractor in this area, so I'm gonna lay that down. And I like to layer them. So like maybe a Christmas tree behind it. Let's see how this one looks. That one's a little bit tall, but I still might can use it. I might trim it away a little bit. That one's actually better. So I'll use that one there. So I'm just gonna set a scene. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put this little tree down like so, just to hold it in place, okay? Cause I wanna put glue behind it, but I wanna see how everything's gonna lay out. And I pulled this little barn, which is super cute. And I'm kind of thinking it might live up 
behind the tree like this, like it's up on the hill or something. I don't know, I'm just placing and seeing. Then I've got this tractor which could live toward the front to make it look, you know, like it's closer to us. Then I've got this little tree, which might be cute here. And then I've got this little box with poinsettias in it that I thought might make a cute little scene there. I don't know, I feel like my barn is kind of floating. So let me see what I can put underneath it. Okay, you're gonna think I might've lost it, but check out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this sticker in half. I'm gonna use it in two places. So I'm just gonna take my scissors here and I'm just gonna find kind of the middle. It won't really matter because I'm kind of gonna use it just like greenery, basically, and I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna take all these off and then re-put them back on. All right, so I'm gonna start with the barn. They are so sticky. I'm gonna add some glue. I usually add glue to stickers, especially if I'm putting something in my kitchen where it might be kind of humid. So I'm gonna stick that one there. Then I want that tree to kind of overlap it, remember? But you know what? I think I'm gonna use one of my stickers that I told you you're gonna think I'm crazy for using. But look, I think what I'm gonna do is put it here as if it were some of the greenery underneath the, the barn. Let's cut, let's glue this up. And that'll fill in that gap that we were having. So now the tree. I wanna tell you, this, this is not my strong suit. Stacking these stickers and stuff, I see people do it and do it so well. And I have to really study and pay attention and kind of plan it all out. I'm sure other people can just throw these together and they work. But for me, it's a little different. All right, and then I decided I wanted this little guy here toward the front. Then I want this little guy here and I want him to kind of fill in. See how he'll kind of match up to the top there with the greenery that I put in? So I'm gonna put this one down. It'll kind of just extend that out. And then with the tractor, I have an idea. So I think I wanna put this sticker under the tractor to give it a little greenery as well. So I'm just gonna turn them into one sticker and just place it like that and glue that down. Something about like that. I like having that underneath it because it just kind of was floating and now it's kind of in the scene, right? I think this is super cute right there. It looks like it kind of belongs there. So I'm going to stick it down up here and I may have to hold it for a minute because it's going around the curve. But fortunately that sticker will help it stick down until the glue dries. Isn't that cute? I love how that looks. All right, to the other side. Now, just because it may not be the side that's gonna show, I still want it to be very cute, so I need to work on it as well. So I've had an idea. See this little sticker of the mantle? I think it is so cute, but it needs the rest of it. It needs a fireplace. So I'm gonna put this here, and I'm gonna turn this into a little, the look of a little fireplace like so, just by sticking that on top there. And then this, I'm going to put right here to this side where the sleigh gets a little taller. Just gonna sit it there for a second because I wanna finish laying it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this guy down. I've got an idea. I kinda played with some stickers to give myself some things to work with. And you might be thinking, you know, this should be done in food themed. And it could be, and you know, that'd be no problem. But the cool thing about not doing the outside in a food theme is if I ever want to use this for like an arrangement, a flower arrangement or something, and I don't want to use it for recipe cards anymore, I totally wouldn't have to. And I kind of like that idea because then I can use it for whatever I want. So gluing that down on the curves, a little tricky. I don't want it to pop up, but while it's there, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more. So to one side of my little fake fireplace that I made, I'm gonna add this Christmas tree. Let's put some glue on it. Place it down here, pretty far off to the edge. I don't want it to be right on the fireplace. That's cute. And on the other side, I found this little guy. Look how cute that'll be right there. I love that little thing. So cute. Just gonna put this little mason jar right here. I need something in the fireplace. I'll show you what my thought was, and it's a little bit different. I know this isn't firewood, but it gives us the feel of wood, and I think it would be cute in the little fireplace down there. Kind of feels like a little crate or something. Put it 
underneath those stockings down there, just for the feel of some wood. And who knows, you might wanna put that in your fireplace with maybe some flowers in it, that'd be beautiful. Then, I'm going to stick this little guy down right up here. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. I think that's so cute. And the last sticker I chose for this side is this sleigh. I think it'll be cute laying by the fireplace like, like the kids just came in with it. I think that'll be so cute. Just kind of lay in here. I think it needs something underneath it. Let me see what I've got that I can stick right here. How about some little pine cones? Let's put a little glue. Let's add some little pine cones down here. Just for a little something. And how about holly? Just a little bit of holly for some color. That is so cute. The little fireplace on the side. Now that may have to be the side that shows. I don't know, but that's adorable. All right, let me take the tape off of here. My bow is now glued on. Look how cute the front is. Oh, I just love this. Let's go back to the other side. Do I want to add anything here? Maybe, I don't know. And I've still got this section if I want to add, but I really want a lot of the buffalo check to show because my kitchen is very buffalo check. And then let's put the recipes in. So let's put our recipes in and we will call that done. I love how this turned out. I absolutely think this is the cutest thing. Look at the other side as well and the front, too cute. This will be perfect on my counter. I'm thinking another idea is to put these to the front and get a little notebook to put in here so I could keep it for like, I don't know, grocery list, gift list, um, household chore list for the season, things I want to get done. Wouldn't that be a cute place to put a little notebook or something? Here's what I want you to do. Tell me in the description below what you would add. Would you fill it with recipes? Over the years, it probably will fill up with recipes, which will be super cool. But maybe you have another idea. I'd love to know. I can see this being a centerpiece. I can see this having a um, flower arrangement in it. And y'all may see this get transitioned into that. Who knows? So there you go, guys. That is our little recipe sleigh. I love how it turned out. I hope you do too. And you know, if you make one of these, and I hope that you do, I don't think we can get the sleighs anymore. I think that was all we could get. And I know you guys bought them out. But if you make one of these, you know I want to see it. So head to our website at maymaymadeit.com and share with us on our customer gallery what you guys are doing. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye.